do me the awesome favor of turning to Matthew chapter 6, verses 8 through 10, will be our preaching text for this morning. Father, let your will in heaven be done here on earth and specifically to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Matthew chapter 6, beginning at verse 8, and I'm reading from the NIV translation. Remember, my brothers and sisters, today is our virtual communion service after we have worshiped God through the word and worship God through giving. We are going to worship together as it relates to our communion celebration on today. Matthew chapter 6, verses 8 through 10, these words are recorded. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. This then is how you should pray. Our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For the next few minutes, my brothers and sisters, with the help of your prayers and the aid of the Holy Spirit, I want to talk to you this morning from the subject it's not about you. It's not about you. I would encourage you, my brothers and sisters, that in your time of devotion and your intimacy with God, that you would read Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7 that make up the context of our text this morning. For it is Jesus, according to Matthew, who has moved up on the side of the mountain and the passage of scriptures that we just read this morning comes out of what we call the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus, Jesus, according to chapter five, goes up onto a mountain and he begins to teach his disciples about the kingdom of God. Jesus introduces a new kingdom. It's not a physical kingdom, but it is literally a spiritual kingdom. And Jesus teaches his disciples that if you're going to be a part of the kingdom of God, you need to understand the kingdom agenda. He says, up until now, you have learned how to do things one way. But now that you're following me, I need you to know that there is another way and a lot of the examples that you have been following are not very good examples. And I want to pause here, my brothers and sisters, and suggest to you, be careful who you mimic and be careful who you copycat, because you may be learning to do the right thing the wrong way. This text is tailored to teach us that when it comes to the kingdom agenda and the will of God, it's not about you. He lets us know that Jesus begins to teach a topic that all of us struggle with in our own personal lives, and it's called the topic of prayer. It is in verses 5 through 15 in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 6 that Jesus begins to deal with the subject of prayer. Jesus says is that if you're going to walk and live and help build up the kingdom of God, you've got to understand the kingdom of gender. And one of the agendas in the kingdom of God is not only that you should pray, but you need to know how to pray. 
It's in verses five through eight that Jesus reveals the essentials of prayer. He says, this is how you, watch this, this is how you keep God from not listening to you, and this is how you get God to listen to you. If you want your prayers rejected, he says, don't pray like them. He says, if you want your prayers uh, accepted, pray this way. I like this, my brothers and sisters, because oftentimes we've watched people in our homes, in our communities, and in our churches pray, but pray the wrong way. And at least if we're going to pray, we don't want God to reject our prayers. We want the Lord to accept our prayers. He says the reason why I don't want you to pray like them, the religious leaders. I don't want you to pray like them, the Bible scholars. I don't want you to pray like them, church leaders. I don't want you to pray like like them, but I want you to pray like me. Ah, yeah. When it comes to prayer, my brothers and sisters, Jesus is the example of how we should pray. He said the quickest way to get your prayers rejected is to be insincere, is to be insincere when you pray. He says insincerity or hypocrisy will get your prayers rejected. He says, Says, but sincerity will get your prayers accepted. I've got to talk to a few individuals. We don't speak in King James Version. We speak in the English Version. And if there's anything that you need to understand, that in order to get your prayers, the essential of prayer is the sincerity of your prayers. Stop telling God something that you're not sincere about. It's in verses five through eight that we see the essentials of prayer, but it's verses nine through 15, we see the elements of prayer or the ingredients of prayer. He says, look, that when it comes to prayer, it's about the kingdom. When it comes to prayer, it's not about you. He says, but when you bake the cake, call prayer, you need some essential ingredients in it. He says that the first ingredient that you see in this text, it says our, pray like this, our father. Don't move to father, but stay at our, because when it comes to prayer, it's not about you. He says that Ours suggests that it's not your God, but it's our God. Our God suggests that God has more concerns than just your concerns. He say the best way to get your prayers answered is not to bring God your concerns, but bring God our concerns. You got it, that if we're going to bake the cake call prayer and put the proper ingredients in it, the first thing in prayer is we've got to bring the ingredient call unselfishness. Let the church say unselfishness, that going forward, that when it comes to my prayer life, it's not what God wants to hear about me, but it's what God wants to hear about us. That's what I'm saying. He says that before you ever mention anything about yourself, that you ought to be taking the prayer request of other people to God instead of your own request. Watch this. It says that when we bake this cake, we bake this cake and we bring the ingredient of prayer called unselfishness. But not only do we bring unselfishness, we bring the word called faith. It says it takes in order for our prayers to get answered, we've got to be unselfish in our prayer life, but we've got to have faith in our prayer life because it says our father. I was hanging out with my family yesterday and I can recall that there was never a time that Ray Ray 
ask me, Daddy, did you pay the mortgage bill? Y'all going to catch this in a minute. There was some concerns that Raylan never had because she always knew she had a father who was going to take care of business. And one of the reasons why you don't have to address your concerns is because you've got enough confidence and you've got enough trust in your father. Your father is just not any father, but your heavenly father is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He's in absolute control. He's never lost a battle. He hung the stars and he spoke to the sky and there was the moon. He is the creator and the sustainer of the universe. And the reason why I don't have to mention anything about me in prayer is because I've got a father who already knows my needs. And that's a good word for somebody today that when you go in prayer, you need the ingredient called faith. Faith says I have the confidence and the utmost trust in the father of heaven. I've got the utmost trust in him and I know he already he knows what I need. He's made a way for me. He's opened doors for me. He's made a path for me. He's given me strength already. He's given me joy already. And the least I can do that if it's already there is to say thank you in advance. Here's what the text is tailored to teach us. We're talking about prayer this morning. And when it comes to prayer, I need the ingredients called unselfishness. I need the ingredient called faith, but I also need the ingredient called worship. It is prayer that gets us into the heavenly realm that we can hear the will of God. Wait a minute, my brothers and sisters, when I'm unselfish and when I have faith and when I worship, look what it says. It says, our father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Y'all got it right there. Every a God's name is to be hallowed. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Tishkanu, Jehovah Elroy, Jehovah Shalom. He is to be worship. Worship, watch this. Praise is what takes us up, but worship is what takes us in to the presence of God. And the only way to communicate with God and get a word back from God is to get into the presence of God. Prayer is not just telling God what I need, but prayer is getting into the presence of God so he can tell you what he wants. The text says that he says unselfishness and faith and worship are the elements of prayer, but expectation is the element of prayer, that when I go into prayer, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Your will be done. Thy kingdom come. I have an expectation that the will of God in heaven is going to be done here on earth. I expect people to get saved. I expect people to get healed. I expect people to recover. I respect God to get his will done here on earth as it is in heaven. And sometimes in order for God's will to get done, he doesn't do good things. He does bad things. Sometimes he allows a president to reign in our country in order to get us to vote. Sometimes he sends a storm to get us to call on the name of Jesus. Sometimes he allows us to get physically sick. So we'll address some spiritual sickness, but whatever way that he has to do it, his will in heaven will be done here on earth. But not only is there an expectation when I talk to God, is there anybody on this virtual service that knows 
that when you pray the will of God, you can expect him to answer you because he's your father and you have the uh, you have the confidence and trust in him that's needed. Here's the ingredient. The ingredients for, for watch this, for prayer is unselfishness, faith, worship, expectation. But the last thing, if you're going to see your prayers get uh, 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 accomplished, if you're going to see your prayers work in the earth realm, you're going to have to uh, operate in some submission. Wait a minute. What do you mean, pastor? Remember when Jesus goes to the garden of Gethsemane and he asked for this cup to be taken away from him? That was Jesus' will. But he finally connected with God because it took him several times to pray in order for him to accept the will of God. Submission simply means that when me and God enter at the intersection, I'm going to give him the right of way to go first. Because the problem is, is that when you and God enter into an intersection and you try to be go before him, what happens is you end up in an accident. And here, my brothers and sisters, you need to know that when it comes to prayer, it's not about you. It's not about what you want. It's not about what I want, but it's about what God wants. The disciples are paying attention to Jesus, and they recognize that the most important act Activity of his day was prayer time. Yeah, they say Jesus does something remarkable when he spends time in prayer. He say more important than me time and family time and rest time and work time and social media time and Facebook time. He says, guess what? It's not any of those, but the most important activity of your day and my day will be prayer. When the disciples looked at Jesus as their teacher, they discovered that power came from his prayer, not just power to do those miracle signs and wonders, but that power that kept Jesus under control. Can I pause here and throw my hands up this morning and ask the Lord, Lord, I pray for your people that they would have enough power to stay up under control. Shut their mouths when they need to shut it. Watch where they walk. Watch what they say. Watch what they do. But in the midst of it all, you and I need the desire to walk to pray before God will ever give us the strength to pray. And I've got some witnesses on here that says I'm going through too much hell. I've made too many bad choices. I've let people bamboozle and fool me. I need to connect with God on a regular basis. It needs to be my number one activity before I eat, I need to pray. Before I exercise, I need to pray. Before I drink a cup of coffee, I need to pray. Before I get out of the bed, I need to pray. I need to pray every second of every minute, every minute of every hour, every hour of every day. We need to pray, but prayer is not all about you. So guess what the disciples discover? They said the essential. We discover that Jesus makes prayer a priority. Because when he comes out of prayer, he's able to practice some self-control. Because if they would have called me a Beelzebub, I would have cussed them out. If they would have lied on me, I would have called down a legion of angels. If they would have mistreated me, I would have lost it. I would have been like Peter and slit their ear off. But when Jesus went through prayer, prayer became powerful. Powerful prayer became and helped him to become pregnant with possibilities. Prayer kept him on the cross. Prayer took him down to the grave and prayer rose him up early one Sunday morning. And if it had not been for prayer on Jesus' side, and if it was good enough for Jesus, it was good enough for you and I. And so with the last few minutes that I have, we also discovered not 
not only did Jesus use prayer, he gave us the ingredients of prayer, but he also discovered that prayer was not about him. The first thing you see in this text, my brothers and sisters, if you're going to pray, you, your number one concern should be what's on the heart of God and not what's on your heart. Can I tell you something? Our heart is no good. Is there anybody in here that can hit an amen in the chat and say there are times that we want stuff that ain't right? There's times that we want stuff that look right, that ain't right. There are times that our hearts ain't right. And so instead of praying what's on our heart, we ought to discover what's on God's heart. Matter of fact, that's where I should end it right there, that if you ever want to see your prayer request, if you ever want to see your prayer request accepted, it's this simple. Discover what's on the heart of God and pray that whatever God is concerned about, that that's what's done here on earth. Can I talk to a few individuals that you found out that the poor is on God's heart, the marginalized is on God's heart, those that are enslaved are on God's heart. Those that need help are on God's heart. Those who are brokenhearted is on God's heart. Those that are in bondage is on God's heart. Do I have a witness in this place? And when we discover what's on the Lord's heart, we pray for his will to be done in heaven as it we, we pray for his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's not about you. You know your your father already knows what you need. Your father knows that you need help. Your father knows that your bills have to be paid. Your father knows that you're sick. Your father knows that you need this. And because he already knows, I don't have to spend time on praying what I need to pray for. I need to spend time on what he's concerned about. Good news, my brothers and sisters. When it comes to prayer, it's not about you. It's about the will of God, the heart of God. Jesus says, not my will, but let thy will be done. It's my will, Jesus, God the Father said, that you die on the cross for the human for the sins of the world it's my will jesus that you be temporarily separated from me and suffer for me and die on the behalf of all those who need me that's my will jesus almost passed the cup he struggled with god's will and can i tell you why you got to pray for god's will to be done because we struggle with doing right by God. Talk back to me, somebody. We didn't get this way because we've been perfect. We didn't get this way because we dotted all of our I's and crossed all of our T's. The reason why we made a little progress, the reason why we're not as bad as we used to be, didn't have anything to do with us, but it had to do with the will of God. And I want to thank the Lord this morning for making us stronger, for making us wiser, for making us better. And it wasn't because we were so good and so right, but it because he was good and he was right. Here it is. The text says that it's not about you when it comes to prayer. It's about the will of God. And then watch this. The number two, and we're done, is not about you. It's about the will of God. And number two, that when you go into prayer, it's not about you, but it's about the needs of others. Can we shout here just for a second? The other day, I paused that God laid on my heart to begin to pray for other ministries to meet their needs. In my time of prayer, there were several churches that I lifted up before the Lord and asked God 
to meet those churches' needs. There's a pandemic going on. There's COVID-19 going on. Lord, meet this church's needs. You said upon this rock, I shall build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Bless this church. It wasn't two hours later, I get a call from another ministry saying that God wants to honor you, Pastor Cersei, and we want to give new direction all the land across the street from the church. Now, you can't tell me the Lord doesn't favor his word. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. I'm out of here, my brothers and sisters, but if you ever Ever want your needs met. You heard me. He gave us all the property across the street. I tried to pay $60,000 for the property. I tried to pray for the property. God didn't release the property through my prayer. God released the property through my prayer for somebody else. And that's my word to you today. If you go down in prayer and learn how to pray for somebody else, predicament. Learn how to pray for somebody else's problem. Learn how to pray for somebody else's pain. Learn how to pray for somebody else's struggle. Learn how to pray for somebody else's trial. Learn how to pray for somebody else's tribulation. Learn how to pray for someone else. And prayer has a boomerang effect. When you throw it out, it does not come back void. Good night, my brothers and sisters. And May the Lord bless you real good. But little prayer, little power. Much prayer, much power. Well, what is the rewards for praying for someone else? You get God's provision, daily bread. You get God's protection, forgiveness of your sins, and you get God's presence, leading you not into temptation, but delivering you from evil. Can I talk to some individuals that say, I want to be rewarded. I'm not praying like the hypocrites. I'm not praying selfishly. I'm not praying to be seen, but I'm praying to God that he might his will be done and the needs of others might be met. And I can rejoice in the fact that when I pray for others and when I pray for his will and I let go of my will, the Lord will hey, make a way somehow. And Lord, forgive us for the time that we prayed like the hypocrites. Forgive us for the times that we went in the prayer and all we did was talk about ourselves. I pray that prayer will become a true desire for everyone under the sound of my voice. I pray that prayer would be the vehicle that takes us into the presence of God, that we might discover the will of God and pray your will in heaven to be done here on earth. Your will today, Father, is for all of us to be saved. Your will today, Father, is for all of us to belong to a local church. Your will today, Father, is for us to come clean, that your word would be manifested in our lives. The scripture says, if we come clean, that you'll be faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Forgive us for never praying for anyone else outside of ourselves. Thank you. Thank you for delivering a property to this church. That even our prayers and asking for it did not move you. But it was only until we prayed 
sincerely. For someone else. That you met our greatest need. Your will is for us to pray. Make us priest who pray. And as it relates to your will, Father, there is no procrastination in heaven. There is no half-heartedness in heaven. And everything is perfect in heaven. Help us to e help us to move immediately. Help us not to procrastinate any longer. You have just heard the word of God through Pastor Michael A. Searcy at New Direction Worship Center. May God bless you and may God keep you.